Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yeah, I see a empty middle seat here. So how's everyone today? Happy Sunday. Kumusta ang experience niyo? Parang hindi pa ako nakabawi doon si Spot. Hindi <laughs> pa ako nakabawi doon. Okay. So today, we're going to be talking about knowing your enemy's devices. We are on week five of our six-week series. Isa na lang, right? Isa na lang. But listen, next week is going to be the conference. So make sure that you know we don't have a service for Sunday next week, right? It will be the conference at 4 o'clock. So come here at 1 to 4, actually 1 to 4, and then 7 to 10. So actually 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. is the break. So make sure you know that if you have a friends and family that are thinking of coming for the service, please let them know. So anyway, so knowing your enemy's devices. Before we start, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for um, just bringing us all here today. Lord, we praise you, we glorify you. Holy Spirit, we recognize your presence here today. Teach us, Lord God, use my mouth. Use my mouth, Lord, to speak to your people today. Lord, we thank you for the revelations. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just bleed the blood of Jesus over this place. I come against any doubt, any unbelief, any distractions right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so last week, we talked about um, your spiritual armor, right? That was week four. And Anthony, if you missed that, you can listen to the recording. He uh, spoke about your spiritual armor, how you use your spiritual armor to stand, right? And be immovable against the schemes of the enemy in your life. Right, so we talked about that, and also, in addition to that, we talked about how you can, not just immovable, but be unstoppable as well. Right, so there's a difference between you just standing on the Word of God, not being able to be moved to whatever happens, right? And then there's also a season for you to just run, Run with the promise. Run with the word of God and accomplish what God wants you to accomplish in your life. So those are the two things that we talked about last time. And also, I want to highlight this. Um, as a, uh, I close on the question, are you willing? Right? Are you willing to be used by God? Are you willing to change your ways? Are you willing to change your schedule? Are you willing to change what you do right now in order to obey the Lord so that you can experience the goodness of the land? We talked about that last week as well. So that was a very interesting question. And I hope you guys meditated on that because I took a, a couple of days and even over a week to just sat on that and, and listen to the Lord. Am I really willing? Right? I looked into my heart. Am I really willing to change? Lord, if there's anything in my heart that's not willing, expose those things to me. All right? So I want to encourage you to do that as well. So um, who here is here for the first time? Anyone? Oh, voila. Okay. Good, good. So let's go ahead and continue. Genesis 128. Genesis 1.28, and you know what? These Bible verses we've been using since the very beginning, since week one. So I hope you guys are familiar with this, but we are going to be talking about this over and over. You know what? Before I move on, yes, we have a testimony. I, I want you to see this because this has a great impact with people who has seen this already. Can we play that testimony first before I start speaking? Ako si Pang Ariola and uh, married with Russell Ariola. 20 years na kaming uh, mag-asawa and uh, married life is um, ups and down. Uh, 
to be exact, February 6, when we had our prayer and deliverance with Pastor Rizal. Tumating yung point na kailangan talaga namin because my daughter Isabel is uh, having this mental breakdown. Pero hindi kami nag-focus doon. And Pastor Rizal said na it's about you and Russ first. Oh, I remember this series, The Excellence in Marriage. And uh, God designed marriage. And the enemy doesn't want that marriage kasi siya yung nag-design nito. Sa pinagdaanan ko in 20 years na pagsasama namin, I never had experienced this lahat uh, hurtful, uh, the spirit of guilt, depression. Parang hindi ka nakokontento. Hindi ka masaya. Although nakikita ko yung mga anak ko, uh, they're doing good. Uh, bless sila. And myself, parang kulang. Kulang yung love na nare-receive ko from him. Inahanap ko yun kay Russell. He's an OFW. And three months, ten months on board, two months lang sa akin. So, uh, kulang. Dumating yung point na nagkasala. Hindi ko alam yon. During our prayer and deliverance, the Holy Spirit spoke with Russell and uh, nagulat ako. It's uh, really uh, repentance and forgiveness. Those are the keys to open the doors of blessing. And eventually, Isabel, um, nagiging okay siya. Uh, there's a healing after that, restoration of marriage, and nagkaroon na kami ng constant communication. I thank God for the for restoring our marriage, our relationship, even kay Faith and Isabel. Naging mas close kami. Kasi hindi ko nakikita yung, alam mo yun, yung hard, ang, ang tigas-tigas na ng heart ko. Parang pati sa mga anak ko, nagsasuffer sila. Due sa, act, sa words ko, nagiging harsh ako. After ng deliverance namin, naging parang, ikaw ba yan, mama? Alam mo yun, yung... Totoo ba yan? So, I, I even remember, Pastor Rasel, na 80% listening, 20% talking, and sip your mouth. So, yan na lang ang ginagawa ko every time na magtitrigger yung, yung pain ko, yung nakikita ko si Russell, yung ginawa niya, naisip. But I choose to forgive. Doon nagkaroon ng opening of doors. To be exact, after that uh, deliverance namin, after four days, the company called Russell. He was promoted. Then, may ticket na siya. Imagine that, waiting for that 22 years long ng kanyang promotion. Lord, this is it. Because of the repentance, uh, the doors of blessing opened. Uh, tuloy-tuloy na yon. Yung healing ni Isabel, yung communication namin ni Ate Faith. Tuloy-tuloy siya. You just need to obey, listen, and have faith. Every situation will turn around. A month after that, we prayed actually, Lord, sabi ni Russell sa akin, Lord, ayaw na namin ng separated church. We have two different separate church. Lord, pwede bang isa na lang? We, we need to mag-isa kasi we're one na. We prayed for a church. And here we are. Nasa Wisdom Church kami. You know? Uh, meron akong isang friend na talagang Pinahiram ng money without anything in return, binigay ko lang. Then I pray for her. Then I forgive her. Lord, sabi ko, i-bless mo siya. Nung first natin ng church, first service of the church, pagkabukas, sabi niya, I'm paying you na. I need to return the money. Yeah, three years yung hiram niya na, <laughs> alam mo yun, na I need it because it's pandemic. Yung kay Dr. Siddiqui, then nag down ako doon na ma-pay ako nung mga, nung, nung taong yon Then, forgiveness. Uh, Nag-so ako ng seed doon sa envelope. Then, um, sabi ko, I pray for a baby boy. I prayed a big car. <laughs> and I pray for that person na forgive ko siya. And after a month, bumalik. And then after that, I have two close deal na, na bahay, na, na, na benta ko. Oh, Lord, you are amazing.
Sun Kapeng. Yay! That was so good, right? There's a lot of learnings there. Can you stand up, Dao Peng? Para makita ka nila. Yes! And by the way, they already have the car. Diba tatlo yun? So isa na lang, baby boy. That's just awesome. Did you guys catch that? Forgiveness and repentance. Forgiveness and repentance. Because of that, the floodgates of heaven open. And of course, she sow seeds. Right? I want to read to you another testimony that just came in today. Actually, because I showed this in Now Fate Is on Wednesday of last week. Actually, this week, right? And then somebody... Um, of course, realize the importance of forgiveness and repentance. And so that night, can we show that message? That night, she decided, okay, I'm going to forgive. Sige na nga, magpo-forgive na ako, right? So this is what she said. That night, I said to myself, na, I need to release forgiveness na. Talaga. Then I prayed about that. The following day, I got a message about our most awaited project, She's been waiting for this for four years, okay? Four years. I got a message about our most awaited project and what we were praying for every day. They are asking me to call them about the project. Answer prayer. Our sample was approved and it will be awarded to us. Praise God. That's a breakthrough. After what? Say the word. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Forgiveness and repentance. That is just so good. I, you know, if that's all you can get from today, pwede na kayo umuwi. No? Busog na, right? This is just really good. But um, listen, I just want to highlight that because I believe some of you are asking, Lord, where is my breakthrough? What is stopping my breakthrough, right? This could be it. This could be it for you. Anyway, let's go back. Genesis 128. Wow, quarter to five, and I'm just getting started. Genesis 1, 28, and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all of his vast resources in the service of God and man, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. So you are very familiar with this. I want to highlight this phrase, be fruitful, multiply. Right? And, and the word bless as well, it's actually from a Hebrew word that means empowered to prosper. And you guys learned this, week one, right? Empowered to prosper. That's the word blessing mean, right? You are empowered to prosper. Now, through the blessing of Abraham, we receive this blessing. We are empowered to prosper. And at the same time, we are blessed to what? To be fruitful and multiply. We're going to be talking about this today, being fruitful and multiplying, right? Everybody say, I got the blessing. You have the blessing to be fruitful and multiply. Now that you have the blessing, let's understand how God used this blessing and how Adam used the blessing. And when we learn that, hopefully we learn how to exercise our blessing as well. Right? So let's do this. So notice this phrase again. God blessed them and said to them. So I want to highlight the word this time, said. Right? God said to them. A blessing is a spoken word. A blessing needs to be spoken out of your mouth. Right? And because we were made in the image and likeness of God, we bless through the words that we speak as well. So I hope you got that. Now, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. So these words again, fruitful and multiply. We learned this in week one. Fruitfulness or fruitful means to be productive or to be creative, right? And we learned the process of creation. What is the first step? Kalimutan na. Conceive. The next one is believe, speak, and then manifest, right? That's the process of creation, and that's the word fruitful. 
to create, right? Now, we are going to be talking about these two words, fruitfulness and multiplication, and we're going to be, we're going to go deeper a bit. Is that okay? Is that okay, right? You can handle deep. Did you guys have your coffee? Yeah? Di kayo gising. Are you guys awake? Yes. Okay, so we're going to go deeper. God created the universe in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. Why did God rest? Was he tired? Why did he rest? Because everything was complete, and he gave man, right, the responsibility to continue creating we learned this in week one, right? There's nothing more that God needed to create. We have established this, that everything that you need, everything that this universe needs, every seed, every resource, every substance was already created, completed, done, right? It's already done by God. And that's the word bara, right? It's creating from something that is out of nothing, right? Create from something that doesn't exist. Now, God gave us the power to create, but it's the word asa. It's from a Hebrew word asa. That means be able to create from something that already exists. From something that already exists, right? So from the substance, from the seed, from the resources that God created in the universe, we take all of these things and be able to create from them. That's Asa. And that's the power of creation that we're talking about, right? Genesis 2, 18 to 20, let's read. It says, now the Lord God said, it is not good, sufficient, satisfactory, that a man should be alone. He was looking at Adam, right? And he said, you know what? This is not good. He's alone. I will make him a helper, suitable, adapted, complementary of him. Now, 19, it says, And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast and living creature of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was its name. Okay, let's, let's just look at these for a minute. God wanted to create a companion for Adam, right? And so what he did is he got a piece of dirt, say dirt, dirt, right? From the ground and shaped them like animals and brought them to Adam. Now question, when God brought the animals to Adam, what did God bring? Ano yung dinala niya kay Adam? Lupa. The raw material, I like that. The raw materials, the substance, the ground, the dirt. Right? He brought the dirt to Adam. Again, notice the word brought. God did not lead the animals. He brought the animals. Why? Because they weren't moving, right? And so listen, God didn't bring a monkey. He didn't bring a giraffe to Adam. He didn't bring a lion. He brought dirt that looked like a lion, dirt that looked like a monkey, dirt that looked like an elephant, right? That's what God brought to Adam. Are you getting this so far? Yes. Okay, so second question. At what point did that dirt become what it is today? When Adam... spoke and called the animals their names. When Adam spoke, that's when the animals came alive, right? And again, who was it that spoke to the dirt and told what it's supposed to be? Can you say that again? Adam, right? God brought the dirt to Adam and see what Adam would call him. Not to see what God would call them, right? To see what Adam would call them. 
It was Adam who gave the name. God never called the monkey the monkey. He never called the lion the lion. Adam did. God did not call the elephant the elephant, right? God did not. Adam did. He waited to see what Adam would call the animals. And the Bible says, and this is very powerful, whatever Adam called every living creature, that was its name. And I want you to see the significance of this because in a name, a name carries the character and the behavior of something. So in essence, Adam gave each animal their own character and behavior. Not God. This is actually the first exercise of Adam in the process of creation. Are you getting a hold of this? Everybody say, Adam opened his mouth and spoke and created. What do you think Adam said to these animals? Anyone? Give me a guess. Kinausap niya. Aside from giving a name, I think he also spoke to the animals. I, I hear animal sounds here. Come on. Run. <laughs> Become? Okay, I like that. How about be fruitful and multiply? Isn't that what God said to Adam? Be fruitful and multiply. So Adam said, be fruitful and multiply. And that's why the animals are able to produce and multiply. Right? And again, I want to highlight this. Who was it that spoke to the animals? Let's go to Genesis 2, 8, 9. Talk about God. It says, And the Lord God planted a garden toward the east in the Eden, and there he put a man whom he had formed. I want to highlight this phrase, the Lord God planted. Listen, God is a sower. Say this after me. God is a sower. I am a sower. God planted. Next verse. And out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight or to be desired good. For food, the tree of life, also in the center of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and blessing and calamity. So you know this. You know the story, right? So after God planted the heavenly seed, right? So God took a seed from the heavens, planted it on the earth, right? And what did God do? God made it grow. God made it grow. Listen. It's one thing to sow, it's another thing to make it grow. Those are two things, and God knows this, right? He sowed, and he made it grow. Everybody say, God made it grow. So here's what God did, just a recap, right? He took a heavenly seed, number one. He planted the seed on the ground, number two. And then he made it grow, number three, by speaking to God it by speaking to it what do you think God said to the seed you guys are learning say that again please what did God say to the seed be fruitful and multiply Right? And that's why seeds these days, mango seed, tomato seed, whatever seed you can think of, they are producing and they're multiplying. Right? Because God commanded them to be fruitful and multiply. And that's why, again, the seed produces more seed. Right? Listen, church, you need to understand that fruitfulness is different from multiplication. 
Fruitfulness is different from multiplication. You can be fruitful, but not multiply. What do I mean by this? You can take a mango seed, for example, plant it on the ground, right? And it will grow and bear fruits, but those fruits do not have seed. In that case, the mango tree produced, but it's not able to multiply anymore. Because there are no seeds, right? That's, pro- that's being fruitful. Now, multiplication is different because now what we're talking about is you have a mango seed planted in the ground and then it bears fruit with mangoes and with see- seeds inside a mango. So I hope you're getting the difference, right? Fruitfulness and multiplication. So a seed can be fruitful and produce what it's supposed to be, right? And at the same time, multiply. All seeds can multiply. Is that correct? So I hope you're getting the difference between multiplication and being able to just produce, right? So we understood how God and Adam exercised the blessing. How do you exercise the blessing is the question. Again, Adam spoke to the dirt. It became animals, right? And he said to them, what? Be fruitful and multiply. And then what did God do? God planted a seed, commanded to grow, and he said to the seeds, again, be fruitful and multiply. Now listen, and here's a question that I want you to meditate on. What are you doing after you sow your seeds? Are you commanding it to be fruitful and multiply? Because that's the power that you have inside of you. We're not just talking about the power to create, but now you have the power to command multiplication in the things that you have in your hands. How about you lay hands on your passbook and your bank accounts and say, be fruitful and multiply? How about you go to your fridge or to, to your pantry, right? And just lay hands on your supplies and just say, be fruitful and multiply. I don't know if you want to do that to your kids to multiply. <laughs> Or maybe grandchildren, of course, you want to do that, right? But I'm okay with three kids. I'm, I'm good with three kids, Lord. <laughs> right? But listen, again, I'm just bringing this up. You have that. You were blessed. You were empowered to command multiplication, to command production, creation in your life. Let's go to Genesis 3. Verse 1. Now this, again, God blessed Adam, right? And he empowered Adam to be fruitful and to multiply. And it's very interesting because after that, and, and Adam created, he practiced the creation, right, with the animals. But then after that, Genesis 3 happened. What, what's in Genesis 3? It's the fall of man. Do you know how interesting that is? Like, you're already empowered. You have the power to create and multiply. But still, you allow the enemy to tempt you. Right? So this is what happened. Genesis 3, verse 1. I'm going to read 1 to 7. I'm going to explain to you the devices of the enemy. And I mentioned this before. The devices of the enemy do not change. It's the same with Adam, and it's the same with you and I until now. It's the same. So kapag alam mo ito, naiintindihan mo ito, right? Then you know how the enemy attacks in your life. And you can catch him right away. Right? This is the importance of this conversation today. So let's look at this. Genesis 1. Genesis 3 verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more uh, subtle and crafty. He was wise, clever right? Um, Than any living creature of the field which the Lord God made. And he, Satan, said to the woman, talking about, talking about Eve here, right? 
Can it really be that God has said, you shall not eat from every tree of the garden? Can it really be? Totoo kaya? Totoo ba? Yun ba yun din, Tagalog? Totoo ba? So what is the enemy doing here? Placing doubt in the mind of Eve, right? Enemy device number one. The devil will make you doubt God's word. Right? Totoo kaya? Can it really be? Now verse 2 it says, And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit from the trees of the garden. Except, verse 3, Except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. Have you ever wondered why the serpent or the devil approached Eve instead of Adam? <laughs> Bakit hindi si Adam ang kinausap? Bakit si Eve? Right? Ano sabi? Palaging gutom si Eve? Hopefully not, right? What was the command? Let's go back. What was the command to Adam? Let's, let's go in and look at this. Genesis 2, 16 to 17. The command was given to Adam. When the command was given to Adam, Eve wasn't there yet, right? So let's read. And the Lord God commanded the man, Adam, right? Saying, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the blessing and calamity, you shall not eat. That was the command, right? For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So God gave the command to Adam and most likely, here's what happened, right? Most likely this information was given from Adam to Eve. Uy, sabi daw ni God, huwag daw tayong kakain dun. Right? Dun sa tree in the middle of the garden. It was a second-hand information. It was a second-hand revelation. And you know what? This is also related to your fate walk. When you receive a second-hand revelation, what do I mean by second-hand revela revelation? This actually, listening to me is a second-hand revelation. Listening to a preaching online is a second-hand revelation. Reading a devotional book is a second-hand revelation. What is that? Meaning you are taking someone else's revelation and learning from there. Meaning you're taking someone else who chewed on the word already and then taking that, ew, right? And then taking that in your mouth and eat that food. That's a second-hand revelation. Um, is that bad? It's not bad. Otherwise, you're not going to be here, right? Otherwise, there's no church. There's a room for second-hand revelation. I believe in second-hand revelation, yes. But what I want to highly recommend and suggest is take that learning, right? And then in your quiet time, ask the Lord, Lord, can you reveal more things about this? This is what I learned yesterday from church. Can you teach me how does this apply to my personal life right now, right? Now that secondhand revelation becomes a firsthand revelation to you. Are you getting this? Right? So that's, um, that's what happened to Eve. Someone who receives a secondhand revelation is more likely to doubt the word that was spoken to her. And that's why the enemy had chosen to speak to Eve and not to Adam. Now, verse 4, it says, But the servant said to the woman, You shall not surely die. Now, enemy device number three here is lies and deception. Why did I say lies and deception? Let's just go back to Genesis 2.17, right? This is what God said. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the blessing and calamity, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. That's the word of God. You shall surely die. And the enemy says, no. 
you're not going to die. So that's a straight lie from hell, right? That's another, and it's obviously another device of the enemy is to just plant seeds of lies and deception in your mind and in your heart. Now, verse 5, let's continue. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you shall be like God. This is still Satan speaking to Eve, right? You shall be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil and blessing and calamity. Now, enemy device number four, the devil will make you think that God is depriving things from you. God is depriving things from you. That there's more, but God is choosing not to give it to you. There's more, but God is choosing your neighbor to favor and not you. There's more, but God is delaying those things to give to you. Are these true? It's funny because a lot of believers, yes, people who love Jesus, right? A lot of believers think, believe that if their prayer for healing is not answered, maybe, and just maybe, God is withholding things from them. Maybe God is saying no, not for now, right? And they think of their, their prayer of say, provision for money, right, for their needs, right, did not come. God is not giving things to them because maybe they need to learn something from this situation first. Maybe they need to build their character first. Maybe there's something else that they need to do in order for God to release the provision in their life. Or maybe they deserve to be punished because something, of, something that they did, right? Is this true? And some believers also are fully convinced, right, that we have a God of abundance. We have a God of overflow. We have a God of increase. But they still have a hard time seeing this abundance, accepting this abundance in their life. Maybe God is not choosing them to be abundant. Hindi kayo yon, di ba? Those are believers outside this church, correct? Yes. Some believers are afraid, they're hesitant to seek the Lord because if they do, maybe God will just put a lot of restrictions, a lot of limitations on you, bawal, 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 right? And then it just takes the fun away from your life. Is that true? Good, right? These are all lies from the enemy, right? The enemy wants you to believe that God is withholding things from you. Everybody say thought. Where are you from? You always want to check those thoughts in your head, right? Always want to check, is this my thought. Is this God's thoughts for me or is this from the enemy? And it's very interesting, again, believers, right? Whom, like Adam and Eve, are empowered to what? To create and to multiply. Believe these lies. And I hope none of you here are falling into these, into these lies, right? What is the truth? We have a good father, right? What is the truth? He's not depriving things from you and I. What is the truth? God already paid for your healing. God already paid for your provision. God already paid, paid for your restoration, for your deliverance, for your protection. He already paid for all of those things. It's already a done deal. Say it's a done deal. Tapos na. And as Sister Isol was, was praying here today, she was saying, it's already done. You're not here to beg. You're not here to beg, God. Ephesians 1.3, it says, the blessing, right? 
May blessing be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual. Let's go there. Ephesians 1 3. Every, yeah, let's just stay there, right? 1 3. Can we go back to there? It says, in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. You will be like God. What is the truth? We are already like God. Right? We are already like God. Genesis 1.26. God said, let us, this is the Father speaking, right? Make man in our image and in our likeness this is the truth again the enemy is twisting right enemy device number five the devil will make you feel and think that you are missing out hashtag fomo sino nakaka-relate diyan hashtag fomo right i don't i know what is what does it stands for fear of missing out that's from the devil at saka yung hashtag sana all daw. That's not from the Lord. What about... Ha- <laughs> it's, it's like if I don't do this now, I'm gonna miss out. That's the attitude. My sale. If I don't buy this now, I'm gonna miss out. There's a business opportunity. If I don't get into this business opportunity now, I'm gonna miss out. May nanligaw sa'yo, pag di ko to sinagot, I'm gonna miss out. <laughs> FOMO, right? This is from the enemy. Psalm 23 verse 1. I don't know if I have time to discuss this. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is the truth. I shall not want. What does I shall not want mean? You're satisfied. You know that you already have everything, so you're not going to desire for anything more. It's like going to a buffet, right? If you go to a buffet, do you go and look at other people's plates and say, Ay, gusto ko rin yun. Parang, you're envious, you're jealous. Do you do that? I hope not, right? Why? Because you have access to everything there as well. You can just stand up and just get get anything that you want from the buffet table, right? You shall not want because you know there's abundance. You're not going to desire for anything more or you're not going to be envious of other people. That's the truth. You shall not want. You already have everything. Now, verse 6, let's go there. And when the woman saw that the tree was good, suitable, pleasant for food, And that it was delightful to look at. And a tree to be desired in order to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she gave some also to her husband, and he ate. Now, there's so much in this one verse. Okay, I'm going to try to explain as much as I could. First of all, this looks like it's their first time to see the tree. Is that right? It's their first time to actually go get close to the tree right so we can assume that the devil actually brought them there punta tayo dun sa tree na sinasabi ni god right now enemy device number 6 on a daily basis the devil is working on introducing bringing you to new things to new experience so that you can try and to maybe start an appetite for it. Appetite. What do I mean by this? Sabi ng friend mo one day, try mo lang. Take a sip of this alcohol. Right? Another friend introduced you to this website. A porn website. No one's gonna see you. Try mo lang. Or someone from an office showed you this new game, bro. This is 
so good. Everyone in the office is playing this game, right? It's a new appetite. You need to be more discerning to see what is the enemy introducing in my life. Is this a new appetite? Right? Because once you start an appetite for it, you're going to start looking for them. Are you guys getting a hold of this? You still awake? Yeah? These new appetites are distractions from the enemy. These, two, these new appetites are actually, I would like to call it, detours from the enemy. It's a major detour. Now, what about Adam and Eve? That's a major detour, right? They tasted of the fruit, and because of that, they lost their home. They lost their protection. They lost their promise. They lost their provision because of this appetite. Major detour. So don't disqualify this. It says, the woman saw that the tree was good. Saw. Enemy device number seven, the devil will make you look at, with your eyes, right, the physical things around you, what you touch, feel, see, taste, smell, hear, with your physical senses. He will make you focus on those things instead of the spirit realm, right? One sip of alcohol is not going to affect you. It's not going to do anything to your body. No one will see if you go to that porn site, right? It's a fun game. Wala namang mawawala. I hear that often. Try mo lang, wala namang mawawala. Adam and Eve lost their provision, protection, promise. Maraming mawawala. Thank you for that. And it says, a tree to be desired in order to make one wise. Nandun ba tayo? Yes. Desired in order to make one wise. Right? That's what the devil said. Enemy device number seven, the devil will use pride to lure you in. If you do this, you will look good around other people. Pag ginawa mo to, in na in ka ngayon. Right? If you have this, people will get envious of you. If this happens, people will look up to you. It says, she gave some also to her husband and he ate. You mean Adam was there? All throughout? Since the very beginning of this conversation, Adam was there? Anong ginawa niya? What was Adam doing during the conversation? Ang haba na ng usapan, di ba? From the very beginning, they walked, they went to the tree. He's being passive. Man, listen. Adam was passive. Men of the house, listen. What are you doing if you see there's strife in the family? What are you doing if you see wrong things in the lives of your children? What are you doing if your marriage is not working out? What are you doing? Enemy device number nine. The devil will take advantage of your passivity, especially men. Passivity. Be discerning of this. Am I being passive in this family? Or am I leading my family? The enemy took advantage of this. And then, of course, verse 7, it says, Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron-like girdles. I'm going to stop here. 
But I just wanted you to see, and I'm sure there's more, right? But these are just the things that I saw in verse 1 to 6, six verses of how the enemy attacks, right? The devices of the enemy. And again, they do not change. Say this with me. They do not change. Okay, I have some time. I guess okay? I want to take some time to explain and share with you what God downloaded to me about creating and thinking on the word. Because you know what? If you really look at our conversation from the beginning until now, it really, this is these two things. The focus is these two things. Number one is creating the process of creation, right? And then thinking in specific, thinking on the word, right? So I'm just going to try to expand on this a little bit more. Now, when we talk about creating or the process of creation, again, there are four steps, right? First one is conceive, believe, speak, and then it manifests in your life. You guys mastered this already, right? So I don't know how to do this. You can probably hold my mic. Yes. Uh, applause for Brian, please. Yay. Okay. All right, here. So, you know what? Mamaya, tawagan kita ulit. Let me just explain this real quick. The process of creation. You are empowered to create, right? Why? Why are you empowered to create? Do you know why? Are you just creating so that you can create, period? To bless, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are empowered to create. Why? So that what? To bring heaven here on earth. You are empowered to create so that you can create the will of God in your life so that you can bring the kingdom of God here on earth. If every believer in this world are made to be sons, sons, mature Christians, who hears, who listens, who do, who speak, right, what God says to them, then they can bring heaven here on earth. That really is the purpose of creation. We have that power so that we can do that, right? Is this selfish? Of course not, right? You're focusing on yourself. Isn't that selfish? Of course not. Because when you bring heaven here on earth, every everybody around you is impacted. Right? Everybody around you is impacted. And this is, again, the reason why God empowered you. Right? And then, of course, thinking on the word of God. What does it mean to say thinking on the word of God? And I was meditating on this, right? And I've explained this in other ways last time. But here's another revelation. Thinking on the word of God is actually capturing, possessing, right? God's thoughts for you, God's plan for your life capturing it from the heavenly realm and bringing it to the physical. Capturing the thoughts of God from his mind to your thoughts to your mind. That's what it means to say thinking on the word of God. Thinking on the word of God is the start of creation. Psalm 139.16, I want to read to you the TPT version. It says, you saw who you created me to be before I came, I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. This is so beautiful, right? What this is saying is that each one of us, we have a book in heaven, and this book was created pre-planned before you were even born. Before God created the universe, God created a book for you. So if you can imagine this, in the heavenly realms, there's a book that says Evie. There's a book that says Brian. 
right? There's a book that says, oh, dang, right? There's a book for you in heaven. And God wrote down in that book, in your book, right, the destiny, the purpose, the calling, the kingdom impact, all the details of your life in that book. It's pre-planned, pre-recorded in that book. Now, here is the challenge. The challenge for you and I, and the battle for you and I, is to get what's in the book to manifest exactly in your life. To get what's in the book to manifest, to show up in your life. And did you know that Jesus had a book too? Let me read to you Hebrews 10, 7. It says, Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. There's a book in heaven that chronicled all the kingdom impact of Jesus, of everything that he did here on earth. And in Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, again, that word, right? That we should walk in them. You know, this word workmanship is actually from a Greek word that means poem. Sa Tagalog, tula. Ikaw daw ay isang tula. Isn't that good? You are a poem, a workmanship. Your book in heaven is made of poem. It's made of words that God prepared beforehand, before he created you, before you were born. And again, what is the purpose of the book? It says that we should walk in them. That's the challenge right there. Are you walking here on earth according to the book that was written for you? John 1.14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Talking about Jesus, right? But just like Jesus, you and I, again, we are God's poem. We are God's words. God's written words in a book, right? And now has entered into the earth and became flesh and dwelt among people in the earth. That's talking about you and I. Now, I'd like to think of this book like a movie. There we go. Come now, Brian. A round of applause again for Brian. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to think of this book like a movie. Alam nyo, ni-research ko pa to. Ah. Ah, hinanap ko to sa box. Okay. What do you call this? A film, right? And let's just imagine and assume this is a film of a movie, right? And just imagine this is your life. The beginning... You have the beginning and the end, right? The Bible says God knows the beginning and the end. God knows every single detail in this film about you. Every single moment in this film, God knows. Why? Because he's the author of it, right? He wrote it in a book, initially, right? It's in the book. And now I want to see it like it's a film. It's a movie. All right? Now, this is you. And again, the challenge is as the star of the movie, listen, you're not a supporting actress or actor here, right? You are the... Star, right? You're the star of this movie. So your role as the star is to play the part that is in the script of your movie. Right? That is the challenge. That is the goal. 
So, Pastor Celeste, what happens if I don't follow what's in the plan? What do you think happens? Anyone? You know, God is very merciful and gracious. So, He gives you a, say, detour. Detour. Dapat kasi dito, you um supposed to accept a job, but you didn't, right? Because you weren't listening to the Lord. And so God said, okay, I'm going to give you a detour. So now it's longer, right? But you're still on the path. But it's longer, right? Because it's a detour. Who here likes detours? I don't like detour, right? So what is the goal for you and I? To know what's in this in the book, to know the script, right? By meditating on the word, thinking on the word. When you meditate and to think on the word, God downloads the script to you. God gives you the information that is in here, right? You have something to share? We're good. Thank you. <laughs> You're saying a longer life? Maybe. Longer life. I'd rather have... Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. Yeah, I'd like a longer life too. But I like a longer life with following the script, right? Now, okay, listen. I have this lamp here. Let me just... This actually, this lamp represents your life. What happened? This lamp Got it. Okay, this lamp represents your mind, right? A mind that is renewed in the Word of God. What does this represent? Your mind, right? This is your mind. Okay, so a mind again, that, not just mind, but it's a mind that is renewed in the Word of God. So if you're not a believer, if you're not saved, it's off, right? Because you're not connecting with the mind of God, right? It's off. Now, when you got saved, it's activated, right? But as you see here, it has different, you know, there's dim, there's brighter, tamaba, dim, brighter, medium, right? This represents the revelation, the levels of revelation that you have. It depends on your connection, on how much you meditate on the Word, how much you understand the Word of God, right? And because if you have a brighter light, meaning you have a brighter, uh, a deeper revelation of God's Word, now you can actually see better. And you can actually see the details of your life. Now you can see, oh, okay. Okay. In this moment of my life, I should be doing dance lessons. Okay, in this moment of my life, I should be getting married. Ooh, right? Now you see the details. How much detail are you able to see if this is dim? If this is dim, not much. So what you want to work on is getting this light as bright as you could so that you can see the details, so that you can follow the script of your life. Right? That is thinking on the Word. That's thinking and meditating on the Word of God. Right? If you don't find out, are you still saved? If this is dim, are you still saved? Yes. But are you going to live a satisfied life? Maybe not. Most likely a miserable life because you keep on doing detour and detour and detour, right? And I hope that's not what you want. Jeremiah 33.3, 3, it says, 
Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, things which you do not know. What does this mean? You have the mind of Christ, the Bible said. God knows the beginning and the end. Is it possible that you are in this season of your life, but you know what's going to happen already? You know this? Is that possible? Is it possible that God can give you details of what's going to happen in your life one week from now, one month from now, years from now? Is it possible? Yes. yes. That's what the Word of God said. Jeremiah 33, 3. Let's put up the right verse. Sorry, I don't have that in the slide. But that's what the Word of God said. There we go, right? This is AMPC version. I like the New King James. It says, show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And so when you pray and meditate on the Word, ask God, Lord, show me things that I do not know. Show me things of what is to come. Because that's one of your inheritance in the kingdom. That's one of your rights as a child of God, right? So thinking on the word is, again, it's renewing your mind. It's meditating on the word of God so that you align your mind to the mind of Christ, to the mind of God. Thinking on the word is taking right? Capturing, possessing the plan of God from the heavenly realms and bring it to the earthly realm so that you can live the life that God had designed for you. Thinking on the word is the start of creation. So I hope you're getting the connection between creation and the mind. You can't just create but not Look into what the Word of God says. You need to think on the Word so that you can create the destiny, the purpose, and the calling that God had placed in your life. Can I ask everybody to stand up, please? Get up, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everybody, eyes closed and all heads bow down, please. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for the revelations, the learnings, and just exposing the devices of the enemy in our lives. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to see the things that we couldn't see before. Thank you for allowing us, for breaking the lies and the deception of the enemy in their lives right now. And I speak to those lies. I speak to those deception. I speak to those thoughts that are not from the Lord. And I break them right now in Jesus' name. I command them powerless Null and void, destroyed today in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Whatever the enemy is, is telling you. Whatever limitation that the enemy has placed in your life. Whatever lie and deception that the enemy is wanting you to believe. I break those things right now in Jesus' name. I break those things right now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Right now, right now, I anoint, I release the anointing of the divine perception from the Lord right now in Jesus' name. That starting today, you are able to see what God wants you to see. You're able to discern things how God sees 
things. You're able to discern and see people how God sees people. You're able to see your situation how God sees your situation. You're able to see your bank account how God wants to see your bank account. You're able to see your bodies how God looks at your bodies. You're able to see what God wants you to see from this day forward in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Lord, we receive your vision we receive your plan we receive your discernment we receive your eyes we receive your perception in our lives right now lord lord we thank you lord we praise you lord we glorify you and right, even right now i know god is already downloading his plans for you even future things that's going to be happening right now just take the time to just receive that right now. Any vision, the Lord is showing you vision right now. Receive that vision right now from the Lord. The Lord is showing you dreams right now. Receive that from the Lord and then speak that. Start speaking that into your life right now. We command those things to come alive. We command those dreams from the Lord in your life to come alive right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, for your word and for your promises and for the dreams that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may now be seated, please. Thank you. How's everybody? Wasn't that good? I don't want, I'm kind of confused because those detours lengthen my life. The detour lengthens my life, every detour. It's not, a detour is actually, it's kind of like ways. You know how there's a perfect path in ways and then all of a sudden you were supposed to make a right turn, instead you went straight. Now you have a detour, now you're going through SLEX, and now you're delayed 20 minutes. That's the detour. You still get to your destination, it takes longer and after uh, fighting with ways for a while. Okay. At this section, we're gonna do, do, be doing our tithes and offering. Who's excited? This church is getting more and more excited with tithes and offering. Actually, I am going to be teaching uh, in connection to uh, the message today when it comes to tithes and offerings. So, as always, on Hosea 4.6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of... Sheesh, so good. And then, uh, as always, Malachi 3... Yeah, I, I saw people here with hoods on. So, uh, so this is like a... Uh, the North Pole over here right now. Anyway, let's say Malachi 3, 8, and 9, which is our base scripture also always when it comes to tithes and says, offerings. says, will a man rob or defraud God? Yet you rob and defraud me, says the Lord. But you say, in what way do we defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and offering. There are two separate things. In Leviticus 27, 30, it says, all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. The tithe is holy. Okay? It's not just giving back to the Lord. It's not just 10% grudgingly. It's holy. It's an offering to the Lord. It's not yours. It is the Lord's. And the remaining 90% is yours, right? Wrong. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Five months that I, it's still not yours. You are a manager. Everything belongs to the Lord, please. <laughs> Brian, you're a teacher. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the remaining 90% is still not yours. You are a steward of everything that belongs to you because everything belongs to God. I don't have the verse for that, but there's a verse for that. But anyway, there's a difference between the tithe and the offering. And today we are going to talk a bit about the offering. Are we good with this? Who wants a deeper revelation about this offering? Anyone? 
I could just go to a God loves a cheerful giver and let's go. No? No. Okay. Let's go back to the book of Genesis for a deeper revelation about the offering. The offering is the seed on the ground, right? And this offering is the one that produces the harvest, right? So the question, where's the harvest? Who has the harvest that they're waiting for? Quiet church. <laughs> Who does not have their harvest yet? Who does not know if they have their harvest? Who's confused what a harvest is? <laughs> now we're talking about a seed, right? And a harvest, right? That's offering as a seed and a harvest. Let's start with Genesis 1.28, the base, one of the base verse for today's teaching. It says, And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and okay. The word blessing, again, as Pastor Celeste says, comes from a Hebrew Chaldean word. It means empowered to prosper. Okay. It also means liberal prosperity. Blessing is called prosperity. Is this a prosperity teaching? Yes, of course it's a prosperity teaching. This is all over the Bible. Do you want poverty teaching? So we're okay with the prosperity, right? Okay, empowered to prosper and liberal prosperity, okay? By the way, there is no such thing as the prosperity gospel. That's my belief. Because the full gospel is not complete without prosperity. Agree? Okay. So in the message translation, I want to go back to the message translation. If you're not sure yet if God says to prosper, God blessed them, and his first command to man was, in um, message translation, God blessed them, and his first word, what do you say? Prosper. Are you guys still confused? No. Prosper. God released the blessing empowered to prosper through his word. He said, prosper, okay? Be fruitful, multiply. The blessing is transferred and activated through words, as Pastor Celeste says. But they can't just be any words, right? It needs to be faith-filled words aligned to the will of God. So the very first thing, you have to understand the will of God. And how do you know what the will of God is? The Word of God, which is in the Bible. That's why we meditate. That we, that's why we spend time knowing what the Word of God says so that now you know His will through your life. And so you can actually go through that, that film exactly like how God planned it. Make sense for church? Okay, let's go to the next verse. Here's the revelation. Are you, go are you guys good? Okay, this is secondhand revelation right now. So after this, I want you to take the secondhand revelation with the verses and meditate it. Nam nam min. I got corrected last night. Nam 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 min. Chew in it, meditate on it, and ask for firsthand revelation from the verses. Do you, are you okay with that? Okay, let's go. Genesis 2, 8, 9. It says, and the Lord God planted a garden, say planted, toward the east in Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord gave ma Lord God made to grow, say made to grow, every tree that is pleasant to the sight or to be desired good for food. Okay, this is exact same verses. Okay, everyone say, God planted, God made to grow. Louder, God planted. God made to grow. So what does that mean? Number one, what did God do? God took heavenly seed, as Pastor Celeste said. Number two, he put it on the ground. God did this a sower. He planted the seed. I'm going somewhere with this. Number three, and then God made the seed to grow by what he said to it. Three things. What do you think he said to it? Oh, wow. Be fruitful and multiply. ka, Brian. Good answer, Brian. Yes, he said, be fruitful and multiply. That's why a seed always produces more seed. In other words, 
Here's the revelation. Offering comes. Baskets comes. You put money into the basket, but if your words are not the right words over the seed, nothing will grow. There is no harvest. Ah, the angels are open. The heavens are open. Does that make sense? This, here are the keys of the kingdom. We're going to have piece by piece. You plant a seed. You need to speak to the seed, your offering, and then something will grow. Who here has been speaking to their seed? Who has commanded their seed, be fruitful and multiply? Few people. So maybe you've been sowing seeds years and years and years, right? Placing money every Sunday and not seeing your harvest. Planting your seed is not enough. Giving an offering is not enough. After plant, you have to make it grow like how God did it. And how do you make it grow? By using the right words, aligned with the word of God, and then you command the seed to grow. Tell your seed, be fruitful and multiply. Say it with me. Be fruitful and multiply. So when we pass the offerings today, and then you hear the Lord say, plant this specific seed, you place it, you sow it, and command it to say, be fruitful and multiply. Would you do that? Is this making sense, church? That's how God made the seed to grow. So here's a question. I can hear your question, Tanya. It says, Pastor, I've been giving offerings and planting seeds all these years, and only now I'm getting this revelation to speak to the seed. What happens to all those seeds I've been planting? Is that your question? I hindi? Okay. <laughs> but who, who has that question? I've been planting, 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 and now, what? I'm supposed to be speaking to seeds? Sayang! Who says the sayang? FOMO, right? Oh, no. Well, I have good news for you. A spiritual seed never dies. All the seeds that you have ever planted in the kingdom of God is still alive. They're just dormant, waiting for you to make it grow. A good example of that is actually, um, I've seen this documentary one time in, the, um, uh, I think it's Egyptian pyramids, right? And in this Egyptian pyramids were seeds, thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. They said when they take a seed, that old, dormant seed, and place in the ground, all of a sudden it starts to grow. Why is that? Because all of a sudden the seed is planted. Same thing. Okay? Does this make sense? I'm trying to compare. Now you're going to speak to your seeds and cause them to become what they were meant to be. Let's learn how to do this. Next verse. Next verse. Is this making sense? Okay, so first of all, spiritual seed never dies. It's in the spirit, okay? But, not, but they're dormant. In Genesis 1.11, it says, And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees yielding fruit for whose seed is in itself, each according to its kind. I want to highlight that verse. Each according to its kind. What does that mean? Money, seed, has no DNA until you give it one. What does that mean? Because they say every seed uh, comes uh, after its own kind. So if you sow a seed of time, you get time back. If you sow a seed of love, you get love back. If you sow a seed of kindness, you get kindness back. If you sow a seed of... Uh, no, I wanted the opposite side. Like... Uh, Anya? Anger, fear, no, anger, I want to say anger, you get anger back. It doesn't make sense. Like, you're, 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 you have strife with your spouse, you were angry at your spouse, and they're supposed to be kind back. It doesn't happen that way. They get angry back because it's the seed actually comes after its own kind. Does this make sense? Okay. So, why does money seed does not have a DNA? Well, because money, let's talk about money, is a form of exchange. That's all it is. Money is just a piece of paper. It's actually in the spirit, but I want to talk about that. But it's actually a form of exchange. So what does it become? Whatever you want. I'm hungry. Let's go Jollibee. This money turns into chicken joy. 
I want to go McDonald's. This, this money becomes uh, Big Mac. Why am I talking about food? <laughs> Does this make sense? It doesn't have a DNA, okay? So what you believe in, what you speak, what you say will determine what the money seed will become. It might be your next house. Who wants this seed to be your next house? Woo! It could be your next job. Who wants this to be your next job? It could be your next spouse. Who wants it to be your next spouse? That money seed is to bring, huh? Okay. I knew I have to hit like, you know, whenever we talk about girlfriend, boyfriend, legal spouse, this, this church becomes alive. So I need to use that example. Okay. It could be a profitable business. It will become not only according to what you sow, but what you say to what you sow. It only becomes when you speak to it. This is how God created and this is how Adam created as well. Actually, let's go to the next verse, Genesis 2.19. Okay? It says, uh, And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast and living creature and field and every bird of the air, brought them to Adam, as Pastor Celeste said, and then whatever Adam called that it, that dirt, became a living creature. That was its name. This is pretty much the exact same thing. So Adam spoke. He said, Dirt? Giraffe becomes a giraffe. Adam spoke. Dirt, monkey, becomes a monkey. Right? And it became. So basically, you speak to your offering, your seed. It says, new spouse. Right? <laughs> I'll use that. <laughs> new spouse. And you go, no, nah, it doesn't happen that way. But <laughs> then I guess, yeah. Right? This is, you have to name the seed. How does it, okay, pastor, you're using, how can that seed become a new spouse? Well, if you're a man, and you're looking for a spouse, and you're dating someone, you need money, right? You're investing, you're planting, you're sowing seed to that beautiful woman who's going to be your spouse. That's how I got Pastor Celeste. <laughs> Does this make sense? I'm naming this seed. So are you going to start speaking to your seeds, church? Three people. Are you going to start speaking to your seeds, church? Yes. yes, okay. But your harvest will not happen if you just plant any seed. This is my final point. It will only happen if you plant the right seed. A seed never brings the harvest. Only the right seed brings the right harvest. Can you go next slide, please? Only the right seed brings the right harvest. And how do you know it's the right seed? Only one way. You ask the Holy Spirit. When you ask the Holy Spirit, you pray, you listen, and you obey by sowing that seed. When you sow the right seed, what you say to that seed is what it will become. Thus, do you guys receive this message, church? Is this good revelation or what? Now take the secondhand revelation. Nam namin yung verses. Nam namin yung tong preaching. What's, what's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> Chew on it, meditate on it, right? And ask the Lord, what else is missing? Because this is just one key piece. It's a one key um, a revelation. It's a one key uh, key. Okay. Does everybody have an envelope? Okay. Who does not have an envelope? Please raise your hand. Fred here does not have an envelope. Pastor Celeste does not have an envelope. Uh, Jaime over there does not have an envelope. Blinky over here doesn't have an envelope. Envelope in the backs over there, please. Larry does not have an envelope up in the back. Okay. If this is your church, I'd like you to write your name on here, and the tithe comes to this church. And the reason I want you to put your name on here is because we keep track of who actually calls Wisdom Church their church. Okay. Now, if this is not your church and you are a vis visitor, your tithe does not come to this church. I want to be clear. The, the tithe goes to your church. There are four steps to receiving your harvest when it comes to sowing and reaping. One, you have to name your seed, right? We just call that. We're going to name our seed, our harvest. Don't leave it blank. Blank harvest, I mean blank if you leave it blank, you, have, you, you will not be able to receive the right harvest because how can God give you the right seed if you don't even, he doesn't even know what harvest you're looking for? So what is the right harvest? 
Ask the Lord. It's usually a desire in your heart. It could be, you know, a new job. I've been this job now for five years. I've been wanting a new job. It could be that new business that you've been planning for for years, but you don't have the funds for the business. It could be that healing you're looking for. However, you need to go to the specialist and you need the funds to go to the specialist for this healing. Or maybe it's just a miracle of healing. That can happen too. There's a progressive and there's a miracle, right? Now, the next question is to ask God for the right seed for your harvest. It's between you and God. It's never going to come from me. It's never going to come from your significant other. It's never going to come from your friend or any minister. You listen to the Holy Spirit. Ask Him right now, what is the right seed? Your Holy Spirit speaks in your gut, never in your logical mind, by the way. Actually, in your logical mind, that's where the enemy plants thoughts of doubts and unbelief. So how do you know? If you're thinking about it, you're probably listening to the enemy because the Holy Spirit speaks here into your spirit. You just know that you know that you know. What is the right measure of seed for the harvest you're looking for? Number three, obey the leading of the Holy Spirit and sow your seed. Can you pass the baskets, please? So when you sow your seed, right, you place it and say, be fruitful and multiply. Harvest, come now in Jesus' name. Go, my reaping holy angels. Reap the harvest now in Jesus' name. You speak to your seeds. You send out your angels, your angels, your reapers to bring the seeds, the harvest into fruition. When you give your tithe, say, thank you, Lord. You know, the reason why you thank you is because you received it already. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you, Lord, for provision. Thank you, Lord, for blessing the work of my hands. Thank you, Lord, that you delight in my prosperity because you delight in the prosperity of your servants. Use all the Bible verses, all God's word, right? When you send back God's word, he will perform because it is his word. But it has to come from your mouth. When you're done, you can come here. If you are uh, giving online, by the way, like everybody, just, just write down you know, online giving and put the amount so that we know what to expect online. Can everybody stand? Let's stretch our hands. Lord God, as I lay my hands and touch this tithes and offering, we know that you are is holy. We also know, Lord, that you delight in our prosperity. You said, Lord, that we can come into agreement, Lord, that you are here. As I touch these tithes and offering, I pass on the anointing of increase right now, Lord. Let the harvest come forth now in the name of Jesus. Go, holy angels, bring the harvest in, the 30, 60, 100-fold return in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's, uh, let's end our service with one minute of our, of our declarations. We have not done this in a while. This is the declarations for uh, confessions for favor and abundant life. Let's start. The Lord will open the heavens, the store of his bounty, to send rain on my land and season, and to bless all the works of my hands. I will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. As the righteousness of God, I declare that I am favored in God's sight through Jesus Christ. I am blessed and highly favored. I associate with those who are blessed and highly favored so that it may increase in every area of my life. I operate in integrity. As a result, I obtain favor from God. The Lord takes pleasure in my prosperity. Because I am God's favorite, I prosper in every area of my life, spiritually, physically, financially, socially, and mentally. Wealth and riches are in my house because I am empowered by God's grace and favor to acquire wealth so that he may establish his covenant in the earth. And as I continue to sow the seed that God directs, my harvest begins today. And if you receive it, say amen. 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 Okay.
Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for this church. I thank you, Lord, for, for an extraordinary week, extraordinary favor this week, Lord. Lord, as I release this church, I claim John 10.10. 10. It says, I rebuke right now the enemy that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And we claim that, that we have the abundant life, Lord Jesus, that you have come and died for us for. Lord God, as I release the church, holy angels, just go on ahead bring favor, just clear the path on the opportunities, just direction, just to hear your leading Holy Spirit from the left to the right, to give divine connection for everybody, Lord. Lord, I bless this church, give him, give him uh, grace, unexpected favor, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.